First of all, I want to welcome everyone into our Team Chiropractic Half Hour to Health. Today's topic is on advanced home care of the upper body. We focus on how to help you rehab upper body injuries and pain syndromes at home on your own. Before we get into everything, I want to remind you all that being healthy is more than just feeling good. We have six essentials to being healthy and well. They're based off the idea that all sickness and disease come from two things, a deficiency, that something we need, or a toxicity, something we don't need. As you can see, the number one deficiency on that left-hand side is decreased nerve flow due to spinal subluxation. The number one toxicity on the right-hand side, abuse of medications and poor diet. Bring all those together, our six essentials that keep us healthy and well are being spiritually and mentally aligned, making sure we're reducing stress levels on a daily basis. Physical alignment, getting your weekly spinal re-engineering adjustments, practicing good posture habits and doing your prescribed home care on a daily basis. Nutritional alignment, making sure we're eating 75% of our food on the vine and avoiding those processed sugars. Exercising in alignment six days a week. Resting in alignment, waking up without an alarm clock, sleeping on our back with our cervical rolls and our pillows under our knees. And removing chemical stress by doing a detox twice a year. Now remember, it takes up to 90% of a nerve to be compressed in order to feel pain. And so even though the types of pains and complaints we're going to talk about today are red flags, they are designed to tell you that something is wrong and that you need to take a step to fix it, it is not the overall being of what your health is. If we're not compressing that 10%, we may not feel pain in that area. We have to support our health through the things we know, and that is the six essentials. Now today we're going to be talking about a few key areas, particularly what happens if you have neck pain, upper and mid-back pain, shoulder pain, elbow pain, pain in the wrist or hand area, and of course, rib pain. Now, before we dive into the individuals, we need to start with the foundations of what it means to be injured. Now, anytime there is a new complaint, we call this an acute complaint. So usually anything within one to two weeks of an injury. Now, acute complaints can heal and then become recurrent, meaning you can have a shoulder problem that goes away and heals up fine and then comes back later because you re-injure it. You still treat it as an acute complaint if the new injury is within one to two weeks of when you start taking care of it. Anything beyond acute, we start going through what we call a subacute phase, and then finally chronic, which is anything beyond three months. Now, in the acute stage, it's a very simple way to handle these. It's a basic RICE principle. Rest, ice, compress, and elevate. Now, there was a lot of newer research out there trying to debunk this as a common tool. However, team chiropractic stances at the time being, there are far more positive cases showing that RICE is effective versus not. So until we tell you otherwise, please follow the RICE principle with an acute situation. Now anything beyond acute, we call post-acute, that is where the at-home rehab that we're gonna talk about today, more in-depth, is appropriate. Now there are three steps to this. Number one, stretching. Number two, muscle release. And number three, targeted exercise to strengthen the area that was injured. However, please do not move on from step one until you have talked to one of our chiropractors at Team Chiropractic and had an evaluation to help guide you through these things appropriately. It is possible to hurt yourself if you don't know exactly what you're doing. Now, once you do have your evaluation with us, use the tools we talk about today to enhance your healing process at home. Now, the reason we want to stretch after an injury is that when the injured tissue uh, occurs, there is tightening of the muscles around there to protect you. And this is a good thing. However, this over-tightening can get out of control sometimes. And that can lead to pain that is not related to the injury itself, making your recovery less effective. So, a gentle stretch to the area can help alleviate some of that pain and relax those muscles to promote the healing process more efficiently. In cases where the tightening becomes overbearing, that is when we get to the muscle release technique. Uh, Overtight muscles will lead to adhesions, also more commonly known as knots in the muscles. These knots can be very, very painful. It can lead to chronic pain syndromes. Again, they're not really related to the initial tissue damage. And if we allow these to stay there, not only is it going to be more uncomfortable, but it's going to slow the recovery process. We break these down by applying steady pressure to the area for around 10 to 20 seconds in order to knead the dough, if you will. So imagine you're a baker, you've got your dough out on the countertop and there's a bunch of bubbles in there. You're trying to knead that out and flatten that dough. That's exactly what we're doing with our muscles with muscle release. Now, when you do this, there is a certain amount of pain that is gonna be expected. This is why we wanna make sure that before you go through this on your own, you talk to us first so we can help guide you to where these points are. What we don't want to do is apply this pressure over injured tissue. We want to make sure we're only hitting on the adhesion points. Now, this can be done in a variety of different ways. You can do it with a foam roller, which is what you see in the upper right corner of your screen. 
a muscle ball or a lacrosse ball in the bottom left, a muscle stick in the bottom center, and my favorite, the Theracane on the bottom right. Depending on what muscle group and what type of adhesions you have and what equipment you have available will determine what tool you use. Uh, you could also just get a partner to help press on these things for you. Ultimately, if the at-home muscle release is not effective, we may need to do a professional intervention in our office doing either myofascial release, active release technique with Dr. Hemmer, or laser in order to help break these down for you. Now, finally, after you've released and stretched the muscles, we want to begin exercising to strengthen. So we always start with what we call isometric exercises. These are exercises that contract the muscles and work them without actually moving the joint. Think of flexing in like bodybuilder standpoints. They're tightening those muscles up, but the joints aren't moving. We always start here because it's generally the safest way to start and not risk re-injury. And all of these exercises should be held for roughly seven to 10 seconds each rep. From there, we'll move on to isotonic exercises, which are your more traditional exercises. This is where joint movement occurs. For the purposes of rehab, we always want to have light resistance and higher repetitions. That's a, more, a greater number of repetitions per exercise. And we always, always, always want to perform these exercises slowly. Again, this is for safety purposes. If you are moving very rapidly, you're more likely to injure the tissue versus help it. So first on our list is neck pain. Obviously, if you have neck pain, you should be coming to get adjusted. Most neck pain is directly caused by spinal subluxation. We have to make sure we're getting those adjusted regularly. So please tell us if your neck is hurting. But beyond that, things you can do for yourself at home. Stretching involves the scalene muscles, which are the muscles directly on the back of the neck, the trapezius, the muscle that goes from the back of the neck into the top of the shoulder, and the pectoral muscles over the front of your chest. The easiest way to stretch the scalene and trapezius, you can see on the left side of your screen here, where you grab onto some object, whether it's a countertop, a heavy chair, table, and lean away from that while also pulling the head to the opposite side. So in this example, he is stretching the right trapezius and right scalene muscles by holding on with his right hand and pulling his head to the left side. The pectoral muscles can be stretched by planting your arm against the doorway and leaning forward. In both these examples, the red muscle you are seeing is the muscle that is being worked. Now, in order to release the muscles that we're looking for, we're looking at suboccipital and trapezius. Suboccipital muscles are the muscles right at the base of the skull or the top of the neck. So the easiest way to release these is by taking your thumbs, placing them in the little grooves at the back of the head, and just applying steady pressure, just like you would any other release. The trapezius can be released a variety of ways, the easiest being the theracane, which is what this gentleman on the left side is doing here. Again, steady pressure over those points at the top of the shoulder help to relax those adhesions in the trapezius. And finally, exercises for neck pain are things you should be doing anyway. Traction 60 to 120 reps every single day. Remember, two to three seconds holding at a time. Don't hold it for 10, 15, 20 seconds. A very short pull and a very light pull. You also want to be doing your neck ups 30 seconds every single day and your burnouts twice a week to failure. And we should be doing these anyway, but if you have neck pain and you've been slacking off, definitely get back on that horse. It's going to help you get better faster. Now, when it comes to pain in the mid and upper back, again, we want to make sure we're getting adjusted. There are spinal joints that can be subluxated, causing these pain syndromes. If we're not adjusting them, none of these other therapies are going to work. However, from there, we again want to stretch the trapezius and the pectoral muscles, just like you do for neck pain. But another muscle group we want to make sure we're focusing on is the rhomboids. These are right between the shoulder blades. This is most easily accomplished by taking the arm on the side that's bothering you and pulling it across your chest, opening that shoulder blade up. You should feel the stretch on the side of the shoulder blade that you are pulling. In the case of this example on the left, that is the right arm and the right rhomboid muscle that is being stretched. Now, after we've stretched all these muscles, the muscles we want to release are again the trapezius, just like you do for the neck, and then those rhomboid muscles. Two easy ways to do this. Number one, bottom right of your screen, you're seeing a gentleman on a foam roller. He has his arms crossed over his body to open those shoulder blades up. He's applying steady pressure with that foam roller using his body weight and gravity to help him apply pressure. Another way you can do it is grab the theracane like the woman in the example and apply pressure with the end of the cane in between the shoulder blades. Again, no matter how you do this, the rules are the same. 10 to 20 seconds of steady pressure right over that point. And finally, once you've released all these muscles, you then want to work on strengthening those rhomboids right between the shoulder blades. 
we always start with isometric shoulder blade squeezing. This is done by imagining you have a walnut between your shoulder blades, and without moving your arms, you want to squeeze those shoulder blades together, trying to crack the walnut. You don't actually have to put a walnut there, but imagine that you have it. From there, we progress to resistance band rows. This is easily done by sitting on the ground with your TheraBand that we've given you in your home care kit, wrap that over your feet, and proceed to row and pull towards you. Again, squeezing those shoulder blades at the end. Remember, light resistance, high repetitions when we perform resistance band rows. Next, pains in the shoulder can come from a variety of different issues. But when we're talking about basic post-acute rehab, we always want to make sure we're stretching the pectorals, trapezius, and rhomboid muscles, just like we do for neck and upper back pain. Those are your primary muscles that try to guard and protect the shoulder. So we always stretch those out first. From then we go on and release the pectoral muscles. Remember, pectorals are on the front of the chest connecting to the shoulder. The easiest way to accomplish this is with a lacrosse ball, muscle ball, or even a tennis ball. We want to pin that between the shoulder and a wall and apply pressure to that point. Uh, again, this is something that if you talk to one of us in office, we can help guide you to that exact trigger point that you're looking for, but it's very easy just to lean into that wall with that pressure right in front of that shoulder over the chest. The muscles we want to strengthen are the rotator cuffs. These are a group of four little muscles that help support your shoulder in space. They're very, very important for shoulder stability. We always want to start with, again, isometrics, particularly what we call internal and external rotation. In the graphic here on the left side is an example of internal rotation of the right shoulder. So in this case, his right shoulder is injured. He is trying to push in to the wall. So with the internal rotation, you push in. Again, with isometric, you're not actually moving. The wall's not going anywhere, and neither are you. You're using it as resistance to make those muscles work. Conversely, the external rotation, which is figure B, is pushing the hand and arm out against the wall. External is away from you. So if it was your left shoulder, it would be the opposite of these two. Again, internal and external rotation are opposing movements. Uh, it's just a matter of pushing into that wall and letting the wall resist you. We also want to make sure we're doing arm circles to keep the shoulder nice and loose. This is easily accomplished by bending over at the waist, letting your arm hang to the floor, and just moving in circles clockwise and counterclockwise nice and slowly. You should feel the muscles stretching and slowly working as we go through. From after doing these two types of exercises, we then progress to our isotonics. These are internal and external rotation with a band, which is what we see in the graphic here on your screen. This woman is doing an external rotation using the band as resistance instead of the wall. Internal rotation would be simply pulling that band the opposite direction. From there, we can then progress to internal and external rotation with a dumbbell. Uh, this is only something you should do after talking to us, and we can show you how to accomplish this in office. I don't want you trying this at home on your own until we have told you it is okay. But that is the final step when it comes to shoulder rehabilitation, internal and external rotation with a dumbbell or a weight. Next, elbow pain. Muscles we want to focus on for stretching are the triceps, that is the back of the upper arm, then the wrist flexors and extensors. The wrist flexors are the palm side of your form, the extensors are the opposite side. Stretching the tricep is easily done by pulling the affected arm up over your head and feeling that stretch down that upper arm. The wrist flexors are what you see being stretched on the right side of your screen, far right, pulling the fingers up towards you. The extensors are the opposite, pulling the palm down and away from you. If you're stretching the flexors, again, you should feel that palm side. If you're stretching the extensors, you should feel the opposite side. Now, the muscles we want to focus on releasing are the forearm pronators and supinators. Fancy word for the muscles right around the elbow. Now, the easiest way to release these muscles is by laying your arm on a table and taking some sort of a ball, whether it's a tennis ball, lacrosse ball, muscle ball, baseball, it doesn't matter as long as it's got a little bit of uh, resistance to it, and rolling that steadily over that forearm near the elbow. Again, this will be uncomfortable, that is okay, but make sure you talk to us first to make sure it is appropriate to start that part of your rehab. Next, muscles you want to strengthen, particularly your tricep muscles, again, the back of the arm, and the wrist extensors, the opposite side from your palm. Isometric tricep extension is done by simply letting your arm hang by your side, and trying to straighten that elbow as hard as you can. Again, it's very little movement, trying to just fire the back of that arm. 
Isometric wrist extension is done by placing your unaffected hand, so the one that's not bothering you, the elbow side. So say uh, your right elbow is hurting you. Your left hand is going to go on top of your right hand. Your right hand is going to try to push into your left hand, and you should feel the muscles on the back side of your wrist tighten. Again, if it's the opposite, you just switch hands over. Again, we are not trying to move anything. We're just trying to get the muscles to work without that movement. From there, we progress to tricep extension with the band. Easy way to do this is by taking your TheraBand that you have in your home care kit, holding it behind you, and straightening that elbow against that resistance. So you see here, step one is the setup. Step two on the right is the finishing movement. That straightening of the elbow is what is going to actually strengthen the tricep on that right side. Wrist extension with the band is what we see in the bottom right graphic of your screen right now. You step on the TheraBand with one side in a seated position and proceed to lift your wrist up and away from you. And again, you should feel this on the back side of your wrist. If you're feeling on the front side, flip it around. Next, pains in the wrist and hand. We want to make sure we're stretching the wrist and finger flexors and extensors. That is done exactly the same way as with elbow pain. Uh, we want to make sure we're releasing the wrist flexors in the carpal tunnel. Now, the easy way to find this, if you look at the graphic, look at your hand together, this blue circle, that is where you want to apply pressure. If you are finding that you're not getting pain in that area, talk to us and make sure that you're hitting the right spot. But that is the central point of the carpal tunnel where you want to release in cases where you have wrist and hand pain. Very, very simple. It doesn't take any equipment. You just take your opposite thumb and apply pressure over it. The muscles we want to strengthen, the wrist flexors and the extensors, as well as general grip strength. Again, we always start with isometric. That's trying to flex or extend the wrist without movement using your other hand as resistance. Then we progress to wrist and flexor and extensors with the band, just like with the elbow. And then finally, grip strength, which is your good old-fashioned stress ball. You just simply squeeze for a good 7 to 10 seconds and release at a time. Again, high repetitions. Repeat as you need to. And then finally, rib pain. Rib pain can manifest in a variety of ways. There can be pain in the front of the ribs, the sides, or in the back, sometimes all the above. When it comes to stretching muscles with rib pain, you always want to stretch anything that's near where it hurts. So if it's hurting in the front, we're stretching the muscles in the front by the chest plate. If it's on the side, we're stretching those side muscles. If it's the back, we're stretching the back muscles. Generally speaking, you always want to stretch away. The example here is showing a side muscle stretch. If it hurts more in the front, then in addition to leaning to the side, you will lean backwards more. If it hurts in the back, in addition to leaning to the side, you will lean forward more. If it's simply a side pain, then you just lean to the side. And you are always leaning away from where it hurts. It's easy to remember it. Wherever it's hurting, lean away from it in order to open those ribs and stretch those muscles. Hold it like you would any other one and always make sure you are breathing. The muscles we want to release are the same regardless of where the pain is. It's the muscles around the insertions of those ribs. Those occur at the chest plate and along the spine in the back. This is easily done by laying on a foam roller or up against one of those muscle balls against the wall and rolling up and down that chest plate and up and down the spine. To finally to strengthen the muscles, these are called costochondral muscles, or the little muscles between your ribs, we do three things. One, practice diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, this is done by starting on your back with your knees bent. One hand should be on your chest, another on your stomach. As you inhale, you should feel your stomach expand. And as you exhale, you should feel your stomach come down and actively force that movement. This is how we practice diaphragmatic breathing. Next, your Superman exercises should be done just like you always do on your stomach, lifting your legs and your chest up off the floor, holding for 15 seconds at a time. And then shoulder blade squeezes just like you would for mid and upper back pain, squeezing that walnut and holding it. All right, well, that's all we have for our advanced home care upper body. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you in the office soon.